Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench. Hey, we're in the midst of the holiday. Hopefully, everyone's having a good time. You know, this year is done already. A couple more days, and it's done. It's in the history books. Hard to believe. Well, this will be my final video of this year. No, I'm not going to leave. Yeah, it's only a couple days left, so... No more videos this year, but I got plenty more to do. Plenty of things to cover. And, uh, yeah, I'd just like to say appreciate everyone's support, viewership and everything. Really appreciate it. I wish I could get the views some of those faker channels do. You know, they hook up a fake amplifier. It's all music in the background while they solder up this circuit that can't possibly work. Bam, they get over 100,000 uh, views on their video. Uh, and I, you know, I can barely break a 1,000 in a day. And the video will probably stop at two or 3,000 views. But, you know, that's, that's life, I guess. At least somebody's watching my stuff. But anyway, enough complaining and ranting. On the bench is this Crest Audio V900 PA amplifier. If you watch my channel, you remember I brought a bunch of this stuff home, I think it was last May. It was all destined to be scrapped. Some of it didn't work. A lot of it worked with minor repairs or really no repairs at all. It just needed a fuse, for example, and one amp just needed a fuse. and. Uh, a couple things I fixed, minor repairs like the uh, Nico equalizer just needed uh, some capacitors. And I fixed the uh, Ramza amp, the Carver just needed a fuse. So yeah, a lot of this stuff just needed minor repairs. And this amp, nothing at all wrong with it. When I got it, the end of the power cord just had wire sticking out. And I think when the guy tested it, you know, he plugged it into 120 volts. It didn't work. And he, you know, put this label on it. Power on, no sound, dead. And there was also this sticker on the back. Spare, not used. And I did open this up, take a look inside in a previous video when I got it fired up. And it was clean inside you know no evidence that it's been mounted on a rack or anything so yeah i think it was just a spare and it just sat its whole life on a shelf it does have some scratches on the top i think stuff was slid on top of it and you know just shelfware things like that but anyhow when i got it i noticed on the nameplate on the back that it's for 240 volts and when i hooked it up it worked. Nothing wrong with it at all. So I put a proper plug on it. This is a 240 volt 20 amp plug. And uh, yes, yeah, so what I want to do now, like I mentioned in the other video, I wanted to do a power test on this thing. So that's what I'm going to set up to do here. Do a power test and see what it can do. Well, I didn't find an operator's manual for this thing, but I did find some schematics. And I want to make sure I'm hooking this thing up correctly for bridge mode. And it does have a mode switch for normal and bridged, or stereo mode and bridged. And, yeah, this is the input circuit. Right channel, left channel, and you have the quarter inch jack and the barrier strip as they call it, just screw terminals and it accepts a balanced input. So when I hook one of my signal lines from my preamp to this thing it goes to the non-inverting input on the right channel, goes to the bridge switch and that comes over to the inverting side and vice versa for the inverting side here goes to the switch 
to the non-inverting side. So what happens, the outputs are out of phase, and that goes to the amplifier that way. And at the output of the amplifier, when one signal is high, or one channel is high, the other is low, and vice versa. So you get a huge waveform at the output. And that's why you get so much more power in bridged mode. And I apologize for shaky cam here. I'm doing this all handheld. Uh, one issue with this amplifier is it has a clipping eliminating circuit. And I won't show the whole schematic. This thing has several pages. But anyway, it comes from a clipping detect circuit and goes into these transistors and this is the input see these signals come up from the input which is the output of these op amps on the input circuit which goes into the uh, input of the amplifier stage and when it detects clipping it sends a voltage here and turns on these transistors and shunts away signal from getting to the amplifier so what I'm getting at, I may not be able to get the amplifier all the way to clipping. You know, I measure just before clipping, but the circuit might attenuate that somewhat. So I may not be able to get to uh, the maximum rated power. I don't know. At least that's my uh, experience with these clipping circuits. I could hack in here and inject my signal at some point after this circuit such as at this point and uh, not be affected by that but yeah I'm not gonna open it and hack into it or anything and while we're at it here it turns out that this amplifier is a class H design it has low rails and high rails the low rails have these three BJT's paralleled Plus and minus 45 volt rails, 15 amp transistors. I looked them up. They have very good, safe operating area. So plenty of transistors for plus and minus 45 volt rails. And uh, I have a bunch of other amplifiers in the same schematic. But uh, here's the high rails. 108 volts. I don't know if my amplifier, the one I, the model I have, actually goes that high, but the high rails, the output devices are four paralleled MOSFETs, 30 amps each, positive side, negative side. I'm showing a block diagram of the low rail amp circuit here, which we saw on that other page. I don't know who designed this amp, but they sure went to town. Somebody said Bob Cordell might have been the one designing it, but I can't substantiate that. And he could have, I don't know. But yeah, it turns out this is a Class H design. So, helps with the efficiency somewhat, less heat dissipation. Though the design of this amp, I thought it had very good design where the uh, fan... Blow, sucks in from the front and blows right on to the heat sink that goes from one side to the other and exhausts out the side of the unit. So yeah, fan draws in here on each side you can see the heat sink. Very good thermal design. Pretty impressed. I thought this amp was the best one of out of the four that I got design wise. But anyway, enough yakking. Let's hook this thing up. Well, here's my load. It's the heating element out of an old electric heater. And if I connect from this terminal to this point, I get you know, this meter. You have to kind of wiggle the control. It's kind of... Well, it's actually about six and a half ohms. And when this heats up, you know, if it heats up to red heat, it'll uh, increase resistance about 10%. That'll get us 
fairly close to uh, 8 ohms, close as I'm going to get. So here's my signal source, the music player, and the preamp wired into one of the channels here. And I pushed in the bridging switch. So like I showed on the schematic, that inverts the signal and sends it to the other channel. Now this is a balanced input, and although this is technically not really balanced output, because it is all battery powered, there's no other reference to this amplifier, so pretty much is balanced as far as this amp is concerned. They use balanced signals a lot in professional audio because it eliminates common mode noise. Okay. Now I'm measuring a resistance between the output and the ground pin on the power connector. So these might be referenced. So I can't connect one of the scopes grounds to this. I'm going to have to differential probe. So I set up channel 1 and 2 for the same voltage. You can see. And I'm using the math function to sum those two together. So that should give me the RMS output of the amplifier. So I have it connected using uh, 10x mode because of the high voltage that the amplifier will put out. One channel here, one channel here. And to eliminate noise, I'm grounding to the uh, amplifier's ground connection there. That eliminates noise getting in. So, I guess now we'll just take a measurement. Let me turn the lights off. The thing scared me at first. When I crank it up, it gets real loud. It's like the magnetism or something. It generates a lot of magnetism with this metal. Man. I got it cranked and we're definitely into the uh, auto clipping detector thing. And uh, look at that. How's that for audio power? Causing the coils to glow. And we'll get a reading here. It's the uh, white RMS value there. I'm letting it bake for a little bit. I mean, this amplifier should handle this. It's supposed to be able to handle four ohms bridged. And this is eight. And we'll turn that off and let things cool down. So the measurement was jumping around a little bit. We'll say 84 volts RMS. Square that and divide it by 8 ohms. 882 watts. So yeah, we're getting pretty close to the 900 watt rating. I'm sure that clipping limiter is, prevents it from you know, going all the way to clipping. There's probably a little headroom there. And, uh, and that's a little warm. It's not too bad. Being a Class H design, it will be somewhat more efficient than a Class AB. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I got my DigiKey order in. This is one item here. I got some capacitors. I got some other things in. Uh, some transistors are out of stock, so I looked at Mauser and uh, waiting on them to get it in stock here in January. So i uh, got some hopefully interesting videos planned coming up, and uh, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.